A key part of what makes trains so efficient are their wheels. Only a small part of an engine's wheel touches the rail at any given time, and combined with the fact that steel on steel is very slippery, you end up with very little friction, making it easy to move heavy loads at high speeds. This lack of friction, however, can also be an issue, as less surface area on the rails means less traction, making it difficult to start moving heavier loads and climb hills. Many designers and engineers wanted to find ways of increasing an engine's traction to improve performance without sacrificing the efficiency of steel on steel, one of them being C.E. Swinnerton of the Swinnerton Locomotive Driving Wheel Company. His idea was to create a wheel that wasn't round, but polygonal, the idea being that because each side of the shape was flat, it would provide more contact between wheel and rail than a circular one, and thus more traction. Confident in the idea, Swinnerton's company ordered a 422 locomotive from the Hinkley Locomotive Works of Boston in 1887, fitted with a set of 5 foot 6 inch polygonal wheels. Most modern sources say that each wheel had 118 sides, each about 2 inches long, while an issue of Scientific American from 1890 states that the wheels had 210 sides, each 1 inch in length. Regardless, they spared no expense as the engine was also fitted with Westinghouse automatic and vacuum brakes, a water scoop, and steam heating equipment for passenger carriages. A pneumatic cylinder and lever was also fitted to the driving wheels, which would allow the footplate crew to increase the amount of weight placed upon them to further increase tractive effort. Named onward, it was put to work hauling coal trains between Boston and Lowell, before moving to the Boston and Main Railroad where it pulled the Portland Express. By this point, several other engines had been fitted with Swinnerton's polygonal wheels to test the design, but onward was built specifically to test the design to its limit. In 1889, a series of tests were conducted to see how many cars Onward could pull up a gradient of 1 in 60 with a standard set of wheels, before swapping them out for the polygonal ones. The results claim that Onward's performance was notably better with the polygonal tyres than the standard ones. Examiners also noted how the engine ran just as smoothly as one with standard wheels, and not bumpy like one would expect. So, if these wheels could improve performance and not interfere with locomotive operations, then why did they never take off? Well, the simplest answer is cost and maintenance. The tyres on many steam locomotives required frequent servicing and replacement as a result of wear and tear, but could be easily turned on a lathe to correct any issues. Polygonal wheels, meanwhile, would require a significant amount more time to service in comparison, and might even need replacing more often as the edges of the shape would eventually wear down into a circle if unmaintained for too long. The Swinnerton Locomotive Driving Wheel Company seemed to claim the wheels could be milled cheaply and easily, but this was an extra step in what was already a lengthy process. Additionally, braking would be much more difficult, as brake blocks on normal locomotives are curved to fit snugly onto the wheel to grip as much of it as possible. With a polygonal shape, the surface of the wheel is uneven, making it harder to grip, and would grind against the brake block more than be gripped by it, wearing out both the wheel and brake much faster. And finally, while the wheels did improve the engine's performance, it wasn't by enough for railroads to consider them viable. Something Swinnerton hadn't taken into account was how much steel deformed under the weight of a standard wheel, providing a greater contact area than they first thought. What likely didn't help was Onward itself, both single drivers and American-style engines were long out of date when it was built. Most railroads likely saw Onward as an improved version of an outdated design, and didn't think much more of it, despite it proving to be nearly as powerful as a standard 440. In the end, Swinnerton tried selling the design for use on streetcars, but got nowhere. Though it's worth noting, the cast iron wheels produced by the Lobdell Wheel Company were made with treads similar to Swinnerton's design. Onward itself was eventually sold to the Portland and Rochester Railroad after being fitted with a standard set of wheels. It was later sent to the Manchester Locomotive Works and converted into a 440, before finally being retired and scrapped in 1905. 
Swinnerton's polygonal wheels then are a fascinating story. While they genuinely seem to increase the performance of locomotives, the interest simply wasn't there to make them a success. Put it down to them being unconventional, awkward to maintain, or just something railroads didn't understand. It just goes to show that, at the end of the day, onwards doesn't necessarily mean upwards. Subscribe for more.